First thing, waves. Waves are the up and down movement of energy on the surface of water. Waves are caused by, the waves cause, sorry, the winds cause waves on the surface of the ocean and on lakes. The wind transfers some of its energy to the water through friction between the air molecules and the water molecules. Stronger winds, like storm surges, cause larger waves. So this information, you need to know that waves are caused by wind. Waves create sandy beaches, which are gently sloping shorelines. They make the shorelines by pounding against shores, breaking rocks into smaller pieces. Beaches are simply deposits of sediment that are parallel to the shore. Beaches are made of rock and shell fragments. They are fragile because longshore currents constantly carry sand down the shore to form barrier islands and sandbars. So our beaches are very fragile because the waves are constantly moving the sediment from the shoreline. All right, here we go with tides. Tides are periodic rises and falls of large bodies of water. If you look at the picture, you'll notice that it has tides have something to do with the earth, gravity, and the moon. Um, when we have tides, we have two high tides and two low tides. <clears throat> How are tides caused? Tides are caused by the gravitational pull between the earth and the moon. This is your explanation. Summarize this part. The gravitational attraction of the moon causes the oceans to bulge out in the direction of the moon. So if you look at the diagram, this will make um, a little bit more sense, a little bit more of a connection. Another bulge occurs on the opposite side since the earth is also pulled towards the moon and away from the water on the far side. Since the Earth is rotating while this happens, two tides occur each day. Tides carry sediment out to the sea and bring in new sediment. Ocean currents. Currents are a mass of circular moving water. If you look in the picture below, you'll see that each one of those currents is a circular movement. Warm currents start at the equator because they're getting more direct sunlight and flow towards the poles of Earth. Cold currents start at the poles of Earth and flow towards the equator. So because it's warmer at the equator, we're going to have warmer currents at the equator. And it's colder at the poles of Earth, so we're going to have colder currents at the poles of Earth. All right, what causes ocean currents? Surface currents are caused by the Coriolis effect, which is simply the rotation of the Earth, and wind that moves the water horizontally and moves only the upper few hundred meters of seawater. So surface currents are the upper part of the water in the ocean. It's caused by the Coriolis effect and wind. We have another type of current, which is a deep ocean current, which is caused by temperature and salinity. These ocean currents form circulation patterns in the ocean that form when the dense seawater sinks beneath less dense seawater caused by changes in both temperature and salinity.
The rotation of the Earth, remember that's the Coriolis effect, moves currents clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. So if you look at our diagram, you see the equators going across the middle. The northern hemisphere is at the northern part of the picture and the southern hemisphere is at the southern part of the picture. You'll see that the currents are going and moving in opposite directions. Some are moving counterclockwise and some are moving clockwise. Looking at the diagram or the picture as you listen to the explanation. Okay, so focus on the orange part of the diagram and what's inside of it, right there at the equator. Currents which flow along the equator in each of the major oceans carry warm water, but when these currents reach the continent, they split with one current going north and the other going south. As the water gets further and for further away from the equator, it cools. So when it turns back to the equator, either clockwise or counterclockwise, it becomes a cold current. So basically, our warm currents start at the equator and they move towards the poles, whether it's north or south. Then once the water gets to the poles of the earth, it becomes colder and the cold water moves back towards the equator. Our surface currents interact with our climate and our weather, so they affect our climate and weather. The Gulf Stream, if you'll look at it on your map, the Gulf Stream in red is a surface current that moves warm water northeastward eastward towards Great Britain and Europe. So the Gulf Stream runs right along the coast of Georgia, where we live, and it's coming from the equator and going up towards Iceland and towards Britain. Therefore, this current, this warm current, is going to make the climate and the air warmer so that Great Britain and Iceland have a mild climate which is, means not cold, um, and Canada, which is right here, is going to have a colder climate because it's not getting that warm um, weather coming from that Gulf breeze. So basically our currents are going to also affect our weather. To sum up this lesson, you need to know that waves are the surface movement of water that are caused by wind. Tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the earth and the moon. Surface currents are caused by wind and the Coriolis effect, which is simply the rotation of earth. And deep ocean currents are caused by the density changes due to temperature of the water and salinity.